we decided to take a little trip out into the wonderful wilds of South Africa, into a place where life is very still. It's very simple and the land speaks quite loudly. So this is a couple days off to decompress and to tune into some places of real power and also for us to experiment with capturing field recordings of these places, getting the sounds of nature, the actual vibrations and frequencies emitted by the land and by the animals in the landscape to create really powerful transmissions. So the place we've come to is uh, the Cedarburg National Park in South Africa. It's a couple hours north of Cape Town. And the environment here is very rugged, mountainous desert. But within that, there's a lot of these pockets of lush vegetation, oases, basically. So as you walk through the desert, you're often surprised. And we've seen many little critters running around here, like scorpions and snakes of all types. and. Uh, mountain cats and dussies and dussies which are like groundhogs running in between the rocks and pooping everywhere <laughs> since i was 19 i've always been very interested in places of power i had the opportunity to always get work that took me out into the heart of nature i was tree planting for many years i worked as a geologist and a groundwater engineer and often I'd be out in mountainous regions or very remote areas. And in some of these places, I could hear the land sing. Now, in a lot of my research and even working with water, I found that the quality of water changed dramatically in these places of power and that it affected the people. It affected their consciousness in these different places. So I've always been drawn to places of power. And in my personal research of different shamanic traditions, I saw that many shamanic practitioners were also drawn to places of power. A lot of these places you have to work to get to, but sometimes the work is done in the preparation. You know, when we remove ourselves from the cities and the hustle and the bustle and come to these beautiful majestic places which have stillness and, and magic, we actually do, once we start to in train with the land, so do we become more still within ourselves as well. And that's when you truly can hear the world and the elements actually sing. And through my um, music production, I've always been wanting to capture sounds in their pure rawness. And um, the purpose of this trip was really to come and to capture natural sounds in their natural resonant frequency which holds such power and, and, and beauty and it's truly about coming back to uh, nature and connecting once more with nature and that frequency. I'll never forget um, we just went for a beautiful uh, hike yesterday going along the desert and you know just being in touch with for me just standing on, on a rock whenever I'm feeling like um, I'm not feeling grounded or uncentered just taking my bare feet and walking and just standing on rocks really helps me to uh, feel more centered and, and grounded and uh, in alignment with, with all of nature. There's something profound about a desert walk because it's not easy. <laughs> Every single voice that was coming out was, oh, you know, this is strenuous and this is difficult and when is this going to end? Um, but yeah, after, after a while of just continuing walking, so my body became entrained with the land and then I was laughing and joking with David. I was like, oh love, I could just carry on walking for another two hours. I call it the original brainwave entrainment. <laughs> because just like when we're engaging in a soundscape and it's taking us into a deeper state of consciousness where we're coming back into ourselves, the desert walk helps us to reach that still point within us by airing out all the minor complaints along the way. It's hot, I'm tired, my legs hurt, my back hurts, I want to take a break, I need to keep <laughs> going. Because to reach the really good places out there, those are the places that are truly removed from the touch of civilization. So there's often not even roads that go in there and you have to walk and you have space to basically just decompress 
all of the psychic interference, all of the entrainment into the 50 to 60 cycle hum of electricity that we're surrounded by. As you come into the prime resonant frequency of the land, of the Schumann resonance that Mother Earth always gives off, and you keep going and you watch how you change. Yesterday we came across an oasis, a place where we were able to just swim and play. And there's a beautiful cave there. And we just stood there in the land, the rocks speaking to us. And we were swimming and enjoying ourselves in the shade. And it was just such a magical experience. Part of the magic was because we had to work to get there. It took a little bit of effort. Had we been able to drive right up, I don't think we'd be able to appreciate it in the same way. <laughs>Particularly in my personal experience with uh, singing and channeling on various uh, PowerPoints, is that you know when I'm connecting with those elements that are around me, there's this there's this different frequency of sound that comes through, and it's truly about capturing the essence of of that particular land and channeling that beautiful sound um, through working with Mother Nature and and all the elements. To, to imbue the sound and it's, and it's a once of sound, it's a sound that cannot be recreated, it's something that's created in that moment and therefore holds such um, potency and, and, and um, rawness and beauty in, in that particular transmission, which is very powerful. So this uh, short film has a lot of clips of where we've been out and about, what we've been doing, different ways we've been reconnecting with nature and uh, showing you a behind the scenes of how we've captured some of these field recordings. Truly hope you enjoy it. 